So there probably isn't one case color as well as case material that fascinates people more than gold watches. So in this video, what we're gonna be doing is looking at some of the top gold watches, definitive gold watches in the industry in one entire video. So before we jump in here, just to give some ground rules of how we're gonna break this down because gold watches, given the affiliation with the material itself being very expensive, does have things tend to cost more than you would say other case materials. So what we're gonna be doing is gonna break this down into three different sections. At the beginning, we're gonna be looking at gold tone watches. So watches achieving the gold look without actually using real gold. This is gonna be done typically through like a gold PVD type of effect. Then in the second section, we're going to be looking at steel and gold. The majority of these watches are going to be using real gold when they are utilizing gold, and then also stainless steel in most cases, but also in that group is a smaller segment of watches that are going to feature stainless steel and then maybe a gold PVD effect to achieve that stainless steel and gold look. And then to round us off at the end, we're going to be looking at actual gold watches, which of course are going to be more expensive, but hey, you clicked on a video about all gold watches, so I'm gonna give it to you. We are going to be looking at a pretty comprehensive list here today, but if you want even more gold watches, I recommend checking out two articles down in the description below. One is going to be looking at dress watches. A lot of the pieces on this list are going to be of some dress variety, but also a lot of sports oriented pieces. If you like classic gold watches that have more of a traditional style and design, then I'd recommend checking out that dress watches list. There are 32 different dress watches on there with a good chunk of them coming in the gold case variety. Also, we have a comprehensive list for gold watches, over 30 on that list. And a lot of the ones in that list are going to be less definitive picks or a little bit more of some oddball type of in the weeds type of picks that maybe aren't going to be the first thing that you will kind of jump towards. So if you're done watching this video at the end and you're like, I need more gold watches, check out those two articles in the description down below. Now to kick us off in the gold tone category, one of my favorite watches on this list, and I'm not even kidding. This is the Casio A168 WG. 9W. So we have a full video on this watch. I think I classified it as like the greatest flex watch under $100. And I don't think that's much of a stretch. So this takes the A168 design DNA, basically inspired from 1970s Casiotron watches, creating a digital look that at this point has become almost timeless, or as timeless as a digital watch can be. 35.4 millimeter case with 38.5 millimeter lug to lug. So this is a rather small watch, full gold case, full gold bracelet, alarm, stopwatch, backlight, and more. Has all the charm of a Casio in a digital package at a price just around 50 bucks. Next, we shift over to a mechanical watch at the entry level position. Just going to mention the Orient Bambino. Depending on which one you wanna go for, if you're talking about Gen 5 with the more Arabic numerals, uh, version one with more traditional linear markings, or the Bambino 38 recently unveiled with the smaller case size, you really can't go wrong here. In-house manufacturer calibers, different case sizes now to choose from with that 38 millimeter option or the classic 40 and a half millimeter case. Movements typically run very well out of the box. Underneath the Seiko Epson Corporation is Orient, so has some affiliation with Seiko. And overall, still to this day, one of the best points of value if you're talking about entry-level mechanical watches. Shifting right along to a more sports-oriented piece, we're gonna be looking at the Tissot PRX Quartz. So the 1978 design of the PRX came from a C-Star model. And then in 2021, they released the Tissot PRX in its modern contemporary form. First with a quartz version, then Powermatic versions to follow. Then to follow that, we saw the unveiling of these gold variants, both in 40 millimeters and then also 35 millimeters at this point. Tissot has been around since 1853. And in terms of volume, they're one of the largest producers of Swiss made watches annually from a production standpoint. The 35 millimeter is going to be right in alignment with that 1978 quartz model from the C-Star collection that I was able to see in their archive when I visited their HQ. One of the best finished bracelets in the price category, and I would say one of the best finished bracelets under $1,000, let alone under $500. This is for those that want that all gold look without having to pay the crazy premiums that go along with it. Next up, we have a Casio G-Shock. So this is an all gold steel case model from the Cassie Oak collection. Now this entire collection was unveiled in 2019 and was really a hit pretty much immediately given its octagonal case design and infusing an analog digital display. I always position this watch as, at least this collection, as being kind of a middle ground between those that are classic Casio G-Shock fans with those that maybe were on the fence 
and we're not really just jiving with the whole concept of a digital watch. How could I meet in the middle and give them a case style that is very much in alignment with the norms and hype of the moment. 44 and a half millimeter case, the steel version definitely is going to wear larger than that of the resin case version, 200 meters of water resistance, different case colors to choose from. So within the gold catalog at the point of recording this video, you have the yellow gold option and then also the rose gold option. Uh, when those GA2100 models were released in 2019, again, this was kind of a new staple in this sub $150, $200 category. These are going to extend up to above $500. So for some, maybe not worth it, especially for the modern community and what people are doing with these entry-level Casio G-Shocks. But if you're somebody that just wants to get the watch, don't wanna to have to worry about anything else, this is a solid watch for those that are just looking for something of this style. And I think you know if you're this type of individual. Next up, we have the Rado Dia Star. And this is a watch that I was, when I first saw it, I didn't know what to necessarily think of it, but it has pretty interesting history. And then I'll also talk about the gold affiliation with this model also has a special significance for different cultures around the world. The Rado Dia Star was unveiled in 1962, and at the time, it was one of the early adopters of a sapphire crystal, but also featured this hard metal material, making it crazy scratch resistant. Even to this point now, with the latest Dia Star models coming out, the outside shroud of that case that looks polished is actually made of ceramos, and this is going to be a proprietary ceramic material that Rado is going to produce that on the Vickers hardness scale rating is at 1,750 Vickers. For those that have no sense of comparison, stainless steel is around 150 to 200 Vickers on the hardness scale untreated. So multiples, multiples of the hardness here, even though it is going to look very much polished in its nature. 100 meters of water resistance, very unique case, 38 millimeters, 45 millimeter lug to lug, 80 hour power reserve movement, sapphire crystal, just like the original. And one other thing I'll mention with the Dia Star is it is such a huge water watch in places like India, Pakistan. And I was you know, talking to some people who are you know, from India or followers of the channel, and they just talk about how the Dia Star is one of these watches that say you graduate from high school or college or you're getting married. This is like the watch of like coming to age or marking a huge accomplishment. This is a huge, huge luxury brand in these parts of the world. And the gold case variant is probably the most popular of all in these cultures. Next up, we have the Zodiac Olympus. So this is a watch that comes from 1961 and is known for its Manta case shape. Very unlike anything else you're going to see on the market, you need crown position, you have more of this like webbed off look of the case itself, if that makes any sense. 37 millimeters in case size, thickness of 10 millimeters. And on the inside, you're getting the STP313. This is basically Fossil Group's own manufacturing arm for movements that they acquired. This is essentially an ETA 2824 type of clone. Also, for those that have an STP movement inside one of their watches, love to hear some firsthand accounts from owners down below to just give some more confidence because this is a little bit more of a developing uh, third-party name in the industry. But Zodiac, mostly associated when it comes to the Seawolf family. Uh, the Olympus though, back in 1961 and the roots for this model line. Next we have the Mito Multifort Power Wind. So this is a watch stemming from the Multifort family, which dates back to the 1930s. And at that period was one of the first anti-magnetic water resistant mechanical watches uh, that was automatic in all of watchmaking. So incredibly important to Mito's history. But this specific example is going to be stemming from a 1954 model, uses an 80 hour power reserve movement on the inside, wearable case. And I absolutely love the links of this piece. This in gold with those rounded off center links, feels like a little bit like a president's bracelet. So if you're somebody that wants something like that at a much more attainable price, this might be of interest. Now we move along to the steel and gold category, the S&G collection here. So to kick us off, we're going to look at the Frederic Constant High Life. This model comes stainless steel and then also a gold PVD type of effect. So not true gold here, but just coming in over $2,000. Case diameter of 41 millimeters, thickness of 11 millimeters, 100 meters of water resistance, and a pretty wearable lug to lug. The whole collection for the High Life was unveiled in 2020. It's known for its kind of engraved globe look on the dial, COSC certified movement on the inside, that's an SW200 to be exact, and a solid bracelet to go along with that gold PVD touch. The High Life collection also, just as a side point, includes now perpetual calendars and some higher complications. So it's very much been rounded out in a very quick period of time. Also, FC does deserve major kudos when it comes to manufacturing their own caliber.
lovers now having over 30 to their name. Next up, we have one of Longines' latest creations with the Longines Spirit Zulu Time. This is the s and model. In 2022, we saw the release of the Longines Zulu Time. It was receiving great fanfare immediately at the release of the model, but I think for myself and others, as we've just kind of started to wise up about Longines' history and them just being a bit more, I would say, you know, adamant about making it known what they've done in the past, which rightfully so, I think people are starting to appreciate this watch even more. I know definitely the case for myself. Visiting their HQ, seeing the original 1925 Zulu time, that was the first wristwatch to have two different time zones on a wristwatch. And then in 1908, they had a pocket watch that was doing two time zones. So it's remarkable the history that they have in GMTs. This takes that core DNA and infuses the S and G effect, real gold here that you're going to be receiving. It's not solid gold all the way through, similar to the Black Bay S and G models. Hence why the price is right around $4,000, making it probably one of the most attainable out there on the entire market. 42 millimeter option, as well as a 39 millimeter option, 100 meters of water resistance, COSC certified true GMT movement on the inside and sapphire crystal with this really cool combination of this brown bezel with a ceramic insert with these gold accents. Now, speaking of Tudor, we have the Tudor Black Bay GMT s and model. This was unveiled back in 2022 at Watches and Wonders. One of my favorites from them from that year takes the classic Black Bay GMT that was unveiled in 2018 and infuses this steel and gold DNA that has very much been a part of Tudor's collections for several years. 41 millimeters for that case diameter, 15 millimeters for thickness and a lug to lug of 49 millimeters, 200 meters of water resistance, hence the Black Bay name and affiliation, and the MT5652 automatic movement on the inside. This is their true GMT caliber featured in a variety of watches to this point in their collection. Next up, we have the Breitling Chronomat in steel and gold. So this is a watch that certainly is not going to be subtle in any way. It is rather loud, it is out there, and it's bold. But the Chronomat is a model family that is very much about that. You have the bullet bracelet style and design, unique crown shape with those two pushers for the chronograph. It's unlike really any other watch out there and as recognizable as any. And in two tone, I think it even leans further into the direction that the Chronomat is all about. The interesting thing about the Chronomat though, and I think many people affiliate it with this kind of 1980s style bracelet with the bullet style bracelet design, but this model family dates back to the 1940s and the Chronomat was influential in helping develop dual pusher chronograph designs to follow in years to come, where really this period was dominated mostly by mono pusher chronographs, which now has become more of a novelty in comparison. Breitling has recently totally revamped the Chronomat collection in recent years. This version here, 42 millimeters, thickness of 15.1 millimeters, solid water resistance, and an automatic Breitling B01 caliber on the inside. So this next watch here, I would argue might be better in two-tone than it is in stainless steel. And that is not the case for most watches is out there, at least in my opinion, this is all subjective, but for this watch, I think it looks absolutely killer in a two-tone configuration. That is the Santos de Cartier two-tone. This watch for myself with the gold accents, with the outer bezel, with the screws, it looks simply phenomenal. I, I think the screws are really what tie it in. It's just a subtle detail. Some people might think it's too much. I think it is just enough. I love the way that this watch works together cohesively. The Santos design goes back to 1904 when Louis Cartier was basically approached by Alberto Santos Dumont when he was hanging out in Paris. And he was doing a lot of these different flights and expeditions and would you know fly around the Eiffel Tower at the time. But he basically came to Louis Cartier and asked him if he could produce him a watch for his flights. And in 1904, he made him the first of what would become the Santos and eventually would be commercialized in 1911, seven years after Alberto Santos Dumont utilized it. The Santos de Cartier really plays true to that heritage, but also having some contemporary form. You have the large size version, medium size version, 100 meters of water resistance. So still pretty much a sports watch like it was at the beginning or a capable pilot's watch. Manufacturer caliber on the inside and a sapphire crystal. One thing I will mention about these watches is they are prone to scratching, especially when you have gold infused within that case, uh, but still for myself, timeless elegance. Now this next watch is probably one of the best finished cases under $10,000 and that is the Bell & Ross BR05. The Bell & Ross family of watches sometimes gets a little bit too much criticism in my opinion, just because I think their designs are simply beautiful. The only thing that I think people can 
rightfully maybe say is maybe a con for some of their watches is some of their movement tech compared to some of the competition. Now with Tag doing more things, uh, you talk about Breitling, you talk about what Tudor has been doing, Longines. There's just a lot to compete against in this price tier that they usually occupy. But in terms of a design standpoint, simply beautiful watches. The BR05 was unveiled in 2019, features a high grade SW300 on the inside. You can get the two-tone option. And as I mentioned with the crown guards, the screws and their incorporation, the case and bracelet finishing, simply phenomenal. I would say it's one of the best finished cases under $10,000. And I personally like the look and also they were kind of early on this trend of recognizing this whole integrated style and look way before many other brands caught on years later. So there has to be a two-tone Rolex on this list and I'll also have a full gold Rolex watch on this list because that's only fitting. I had to pin and point it down to one watch and I was struggling which one to go for. Can you do a Datejust? Maybe talk about the Explorer, but those don't feel as definitive for me and unique as the Rolex Bluesy. So this is the 1266 one three LB. This model family for me, like it's a little bit brazen. It's a little bit, uh, you know, much at times. It's loud, but I don't know. I kind of like it still. Like this is one of those Rolex models, but I, it just doesn't feel like it should work as well as it does, but it does. Certain type of individual needs to pull this off in a modern case format. You're looking at that 41 millimeter case, 12.7 millimeters in thickness, 300 meters of water resistance, classic Rolex on that standpoint for there. And then 32, 35 movement on the inside, 70 hour power reserve, uh, updated in 2020 for that new kind of bluesy generation. Some people detest the look of this watch. I have come to like it a bit more as time has gone on because I was not, I had a more of a love-hate relationship with two-tone. I think it could look awful and then it could look great. For some reason, the blue and the gold here, it just fuses together to create a nice end result. So now we move into the all gold watch category. So these are gonna be looking at cases made of usually 18 karat gold is what you're gonna conventionally see in watch cases given that it's going to have the right hue. It has uh, not as soft as something like a higher karat gold. So that's usually what watch brands are going to utilize. And to kick us off here, this is a bit of an anomaly for the price category. If you're looking at all gold watches, typically, under $10,000 for a gold watch, not going to happen. Here we have Bomb and Mercier though with their Clifton coming in with a price under $8,000 for a gold case watch, which is pretty remarkable. And then considering also what you're getting on the inside for the movement, this is their Bombatic caliber, which is going to be very similar to what IWC and their Ingenieur is doing in terms of the specs across the board for its extended power reserve of five days, COSC certification to go along with it. This is just one of those hot deals when it comes to all gold gold case watches and Bomb and Mercier very underrated. They're actually the sixth oldest current in operation Swiss watch brand. Next up, we have to mention a Cartier tank on this list. And for me, this is what I would really associate most with the Cartier tank. This is the Cartier tank Louis. Classic wearing dimensions, wonderful symmetry of the dial, classic Roman numerals, and then a gold case to go along with it. This is what you could probably say is paying the most homage to the original 1917 design in the current collection, or at least one that you have to mention. Most Cartier tanks don't deviate too far from the original path in the first place, but uh, this one's even closer to home when it comes to that. This model name honors the past and the era of the luxury house of the early 20th century with Louis Cartier and really helped take the brand to new heights, as I mentioned earlier, with his affiliation with Alberto Santos Dumont and doing some crazy things in watchmaking and being at the cutting edge of things as well as scaling production and really growing the brand at that time. Manual caliber on the inside, all-time icon without question. In a similar rectangular case, we have to look at the JLC Reverso. Here, we're going to be showcasing the duo face calendar. So now taking the classic Reverso and then adding on top of it, the duo face function. The duo face function was first released in the 1990s, basically creating two dials in one watch. This comes with a additional calendar for the front display, all gold case and chassis. Duo faces were a little bit larger, but still very wearable on wrist. And then the big thing here is only 10.9 millimeters in thickness, despite the very involved case, which has alone 50 components. So next up, we have an all gold Rolex watch. Talked about the bluesy earlier for the two-tone model. When it comes to an all gold case Rolex watch, there's some that you can mention. I think some people might say, oh, you gotta show all gold Daytona. That's the watch that everybody affiliates with gold and Rolex. But for me, there's only one choice. This is the Rolex Daydate. Here we have the 128238. 
This is the 36 millimeter variant in yellow gold, classic president bracelet. This is the gold Rolex watch. I mean, for me, I don't think there's anything else that beats it out or supplants it in any way. 12 millimeters in thickness, water resistance of the class or oyster case, 100 meters, automatic 3255 on the inside with that day-date function. This is the no-brainer setup and configuration for a Rolex day-date, in my opinion. Yellow gold case, fluted bezel, president's bracelet, which is affiliated with the bracelet design that you're seeing here, that, you know, created around 1956, mid-1950s, affiliated with different presidents that would wear it back in the day. Um, probably most famous famously associated, I would say, with Lyndon B. Johnson. He was famously wearing it all the time, but one of Rolex's undisputed icons. Next, we have one of my personal favorites from Omega. This is the Omega Speedmaster Professional Moonshine Gold. So Omega's different golds are a little bit confusing. So you have their Moonshine Gold, which is their form of yellow gold. Then you have their Canopus Gold, which is their white gold option. Then you have their Sedna Gold, which is their rose gold. The moonshine gold with this green dial combination is a beautiful one to look at. And I remember I was at the unveiling of this watch release, I believe it was just last year, and it feels longer ago, but it was a watch that was definitely towards the top of my list in terms of uh, standouts for the year for Chronograph. Classic Speedmaster Professional design across the board. If you're familiar with that stainless steel option, nothing's gonna look too different here. 42 millimeters in that case size, thickness of 13.2 millimeters, lug to lug of 47 and a half millimeters, water resistance of 50 meters, and a caliber of the 3861 coax axial Metas certified movement on the inside, which is going to be certified as a fully cased up watch. And then also the movement is going to be COSC certified beforehand. Omega's Moonshine Gold has that 75% gold as we're talking about with 18 karat, but then also we'll do some little changes with the alloy to give it this more muted look that I feel is a little bit less flashy compared to some of the other all gold watches and bracelet watches that you're gonna see on this list. I think it's really lovely and contrasting with that green. Usually when you're looking at an all gold watch, it just sucks the life out of a different color or a dial color. In this case, I feel the gold almost complements and bolsters up the green. Next, we have the Vacheron Constantin 222. This was probably Vacheron's biggest release in quite some time. The 222 is a storied model from 1977 from the brand, following the 1976 release of the Nautilus, as well as the Royal Oak a few years earlier. This watch is very original and pays true homage to that 1977 design, 37 millimeter case, 7.95 millimeters in thickness, and then an automatic caliber on the inside, the 2455-2. Beautiful bracelet. I remember having the vintage model right next to the new contemporary model, and I had to do like a double take a few times because they had this like really pristine example, so there's barely any scratches on it. And then you had the new model, and it was hard to differentiate the two at certain points. They did such a wonderful job in recreating this, bringing it forth. I hope that they continue to extend this collection into different case materials, but for many, this is the classic 222 configuration. Now for this next brand and watch, I don't even know if I can say it's just a watch, I'm just gonna classify it as Langa Honey Gold, because this is, for me, an important pillar when you're talking about having a unique approach to the concept of gold. Their combination of pink and yellow gold a little bit unlike different shades. It's probably maybe a bit of a stretch to say that it's unlike anything else when it comes to gold, because it's all about the details when it comes to these different hues. But this is something that I would associate with Langa. It's their unique case of gold. Uh, you've seen this available in different 1815 models, the Langa One collection, including the Langa One Time Zone in Honey Gold simply a beautiful looking shade of gold. Next up, we have the Breguet Classique. So the Breguet Classique, and just Breguet as a brand in general, is something I always affiliate with gold, both for their cases, but also for their dials. Their dials for the Classique are full gold, and then are going to be treated, and then eventually going to be given a guilloché pattern on top of it. If you've not seen my video where I actually was able and fortunate enough to tour through uh, Breguet's manufacturer with their CEO, who was formerly a watchmaker before he became the CEO of the brand, I would recommend checking it out. I'll link to it in the description down below. Classique, as you would probably expect from a name like Classique, 
Classic is very traditional in its approach. 38 millimeters for its case size, razor thin at 5.4 millimeters in thickness, and then an automatic caliber 502.3 on the inside. Breguet, one of the most storied names in watchmaking dating back to 1775. And then to close us out here, we have a watch that when I'm thinking of all gold, and I'm thinking of somebody that wants to make a statement and also has the, I don't know, deep enough pockets to make it happen, I think of the Patek Philippe 5981R. This is the Nautilus automatic chronograph, all gold. Yes, it's exactly what you expect, but it is no doubt hard to look away from. This is, if you've ever handled this watch, a freaking brick in terms of how heavy it is uh, on the wrist. It's only 40 and a half millimeters in case size, but it feels much larger when you have one on. The Nautilus was originally unveiled back in 1976. And then to mark the occasion of 40 years, they unveiled the automatic chronograph of the Nautilus. And at the time, that was really the introduction of introducing their new in-house automatic chronograph caliber, now a full collection. And I would say one of the pillars of modern Patek Philippe and one of the most hype models on the entire planet, flyback chronograph function, all gold case. Although there's a lot of opinions on what is the best Nautilus, there are a lot that will say that this is the Nautilus to own. But all right, guys, that is my list here today, looking at some top gold watches in the industry to consider. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. Also check out those additional articles down below if you want even more gold watches that go beyond just what we talked about in this video here today. Definitely check out teddybaldister.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. Also, if you want to support the content, how we're able to keep everything going here is through selling watches on our site. So if you are in the market, we would absolutely love to have your business. We know you can essentially get a watch anywhere nowadays, uh, but it allows us to keep doing what we're doing, and we love what we do here. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.